Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to go over some side hustle opportunities that will help you gain some additional income each month. Uh, before we get into that, though, just wanted to welcome you back to the channel. And uh, before we get too far into it, if you find value in this video or for any video for that matter on the channel, make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can let you know every time we release new content. Other than that, guys, let's dive right on into it. All right, guys, so first and foremost, what in the world is a side hustle? Uh, simply put, a side hustle is a part-time business or job that helps create extra money aside from your full-time career or job. It's similar to a side or end table in your living room. You can't feed your whole family on it, but you can surely place a cup of coffee or an ice cold beer after a long day of work. And while it's not 100% providing everything you may desire from the longer table, it still is super convenient and does serve a purpose. So in comparison, a side hustle is something that will help supplement your income aside from your full time job. It could be that you want extra money for food, clothes, helping pay off debt, or just to have some more money to shove into your sock drawer or to save for a rainy day. So how do you know which one's going to be right for you? Well, the first thing you should do to determine exactly what your goals are before you even begin to explore a side hustle, because there's so many out there that you don't want to just grab the first one that comes along. Then realizing that either you don't have time or commit to commit to the part time gig or it just doesn't realistically meet your income goals. Uh, so thinking about what you need to decide before you start targeting side hustles. First thing I like to think about is obviously the money side of the new side gig. Can I make money from this particular side hustle? Uh, how much money can I make from it and easily and how easy will it be for me to do so? And also, will it be enjoyable? Uh, second thing. I want to think about is time. How much time is it going to actually take away from my full time job and other things that I have going on in my life? Does it fall at a time of the day where I could actually become available? I mean, if these things don't work out, then that particular side hustle may not work out for you. Um, how do they create money aside from this side hustle? What type of potential is there uh, from performing the side hustle? These are all questions I like to ask before I even go down that path. I like simple and honestly, if you're exploring a side hustle, you should look for simple as well. Unless of course you're super desperate. In that case, you may just have to take what you can get for the time being. Uh, we could talk more on that later. All right. So now that you've made it through the fluff of the video, let's talk about what you really stopped by for. Here are my top side hustles for you to begin making money to help supplement some of your income, starting with number five, and that is drop shipping using eBay or Amazon. When I was in college, I was looking for all kinds of different side hustle opportunities. And the more financial books I read, the more people talked about selling things on eBay to make some extra money. So I began doing that, but eventually got tired of having to drive to the post office to ship out the items. Uh, so I remember, so remember like what I said earlier, I like simple, right? So I found out about drop shipping. Drop shipping is when you list an item on a website sell it and then purchase it from another website and send to the customer at a marked up price. So basically you never have to actually touch that item. Uh, this prevented me from having to go to the post office, pre-purchase any items with money I didn't have to begin with and allow me to begin generating enough side money to help pay for some of the college tuition for my graduate school. Uh, there is a downfall in this, however, I'm not going to lie. First, it can be time consuming having to research all the items and you know, deal with returns or deal with, you know, constantly tracking prices and things like that. Uh, the fact that you're listing items from another website means that you have to keep up with those items to make sure they're still available. And like I said, price changes. Um, so if you, if they run out of stock on a particular item that you, you're listing, then you're going to have to deal with refunds and you have to go find a different item and all that type of things too. Uh, plus, uh, the market is pretty super saturated in regards to drop shipping. There's so many different drop shippers out there. There's so many different drop ship websites. Uh, it's pretty competitive uh, trying to get your business going. However, it's not impossible. There's so many people making money online using this method still. And there's a lot more apps that you can use now to kind of help your business get going and help it grow. And I'm just talking about for someone who's just getting started needing some extra money, you might need like $100 a month, $150 a month could go a long way for you, or you may need like 500 to 1000. Uh, this is a, a good option to get that going. But there is a learning curve involved in this too. So 
Uh, the good news is there's so many different resources you can use to perform this side hustle uh, that if you're driven and motivated, you should be able to make some success out of it. So I'm going to put some links in the description below where you can kind of actually see uh, some information, get some information on drop shipping. My number four, refinish furniture and resell at a higher price. Now, before you tell me you're not a handy man or handy woman, let me remind you that YouTube has unlimited amounts of how-to videos on how to use tools, refinish projects, etc., etc., etc. So before you start making excuses, remember that you need to make money. So let's get creative because the this one is actually really fun, like really, really fun. So imagine going into an estate sale and or you know garage sale, something like that. There's an old end table that has some scuff marks on it. Maybe one of the legs are loose. Maybe it's missing like some tile or whatever, whatever's on covering the table. Uh, the guy's trying to get rid of it, just wants it out the house for $10, but you only have five bucks. You offer them $5 and they accept because they just want it gone. It's all beat up if they're just gonna throw it out anyway. You head over to Walmart or Lowe's, get some stains, some paint, some sandpaper, maybe a few screws. And all of a sudden you turn this table into a whole new looking item and uh you know had some fun in the process you hop on the facebook you list the same end table for forty dollars that you bought for five and you've just sold your first item now i know what you're thinking that the sandpaper the paint the stain they all cut into your profit right but these are items you may one you might already have some at home but also you're not just going to use those items to make one project they're going to go a lot further than just that one end table so Yes, while that may have cut a little bit into your profit, you got to think more kind of longer term on this one. It's going to help you build future items. So if you're not into the whole estate sale shopping thing, then you could just look around your house or other people's houses for scrap wood. Now you'd be surprised how many things you can make out of old pieces of wood that are just lying around. For example, an old one by four piece of wood can actually make a great key or coat rack. If you have a little bit of vision and work ethic, you can easily sell these things for 20 bucks a pop, about two foot long. You just need some hooks and that mount, you know, like hold the keys or the coats up. You can buy them at Walmart and they constantly have these on clearance. So you'd be surprised. Um, I'd be surprised if you couldn't find a good deal on some to make like five or 10 racks, list them for 20 bucks, throw them on Facebook Marketplace, throw them on eBay, and you never know what can become of it. So, uh, <clears throat> And every now and again, you start doing this enough and you start kind of getting decent at it. You'd be surprised what can come of it. Every now and again, I get people that call me and say, hey, I have this old piece of furniture. I'm getting rid of it. Do you want to take it, refinish it and sell it? So no cost to me, just a donation that can turn into some money in my pocket. So it can kind of turn into something bigger than what you kind of originally planned for. Uh, number three, retail arbitrage. And I'm actually going to talk about the furniture, how that can be kind of tied into this as well. Uh, have you ever been in the dollar store, for example, okay, or Walmart, and you passed in front of the insane clearance aisles, and all of these things are marked down to pennies on the dollar? Well, those items can be money in your pocket by using Amazon FBA, eBay, or even Facebook Marketplace. It's a basic principle of buying low, selling high. Buy something for a dollar, typically sells for ten dollars. You can sell it for ten, or you could even sell it for five to eight dollars. You're selling at a discount, but you're still making a pretty decent markup on that item. Amazon, to me, is the easiest way to do this because you can send all the items directly to them and they'll sell it, they'll package it, they'll ship it for you. Uh, you will, will, of course, will need to pay for the shipment to send to Amazon originally. Uh, and you're also charged a fee every time that you sell an item. But with their helpful FBA calculator, you'll be able to figure out exactly how much you need to charge to make a profit before you put that listing price online. Uh, back to the furniture thing I was talking about, if you're not into the whole handyman type thing, you don't want to refinish these things, you can still go to these estate sales, these garage sales, and just buy things that are in decent shape and just resell them. Like go on Facebook Marketplace and mark it up. You can still buy something for 10, sell it for 20, buy something for five, sell it for 30. And as long as it's in good shape and you can sell it for that price, that's another form of retail arbitrage uh, but it's more or less a flea market arbitrage, I guess, at that point. Okay, number two, swing trading and options trading. All right, so let's be clear. This is by far the most risky of the bunch, but also one of the biggest upsides. If you follow my channel, you know that swing trading 
you know what swing trading is and you know what options are. If you don't follow my channel, shame on you, just kidding. Uh, swing trading is simple. You buy a stock at a low point and then when it spikes up, you sell it. It can happen in a day, it can happen in two days, it can happen in two weeks, it can happen in two months. That's the good thing and the bad thing about it is sometimes it may take a little bit longer or it may happen, I mean, instantly. I've done this before where I put money in and within seconds it shot up and I went ahead and sold it. Uh, then on the flip side of that, I bought something and then I'm like, okay, it's gonna go up. And all of a sudden it just doesn't. It either stays stagnant or it falls and then you have to wait for it to recover or you have a stop loss where it just bounces you out. But that's a whole different topic. Um, so uh, options are a little bit more tricky but also pretty simple in a sense. If you see a stock that has been beaten down for months and you know it should be trading at a higher price, you can buy what's called an option. This means you think the stock's gonna go up to a certain price point. If it goes up to meet your expectations in the time frame that you selected on the option, you'll make money. On the flip side, if a stock is running high off of some type of speculation, say it's up two, 300% just because they think something might happen, then you can bet that it would be a reverse in price and that's called a put option you're betting that the price is going to go down now both require the ability to research the market read stock charts if you're trying to do it accurately accurately and also require some capital to get started but for options you don't really need as much as you would think uh, it's important to also note that this is the most risky and probably not a great option if you need extra money and you can't afford to lose any okay so like if you're in a bind and you just need extra money or you know, if you have money and you just kind of want to play around for a side option, this might be something. But if it's a, a time where you need money and you can't afford to lose it, this would not be for you. Which brings me to the last side hustle. Number one, the most lucrative for me and the most less less risky uh, than all of the others. It requires zero capital to get started and can even be an all cash side hustle. Uh, this is tutoring or private training and coaching. Think of something that you're good at. It can be teaching a subject, building resumes, doing some type of skill. People ask for your help. So you set times and you basically teach them how to do your particular skill. And you charge an hourly rate for your expertise. Once you do a good job, word starts getting out, you get what's called referrals. This, this one I love specifically because you can figure out, guys, exactly how much extra money you need for the month, divide it by your hourly rate, and then target exactly how many people you need to reach your money goal, which is pretty cool. It's one that's easily trackable, you know, throughout the whole month, throughout the whole year. You can kind of predict, project what type of money you could, you know, potentially make off of this. Uh, it's a great way to help pay off debt, save money, or just have some extra walking around money. It literally, guys, checks all of the boxes. So there you have it, guys. All of it in a nutshell, my top five side hustles to create some extra money i've also been kind of debating possibly starting a course where i break down each of these specifically and give you details on how to effectively manage and uh, make money from each of these so let me know in the comment section if you think that'd be a good idea or not as always thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you in the next one